just the cows we get. The last time I met him was when I was round at James's house before a netball game, and I popped outside because I think James was being picked up for a Mystery Monday meal. Yeah. And I popped yeah. out the house, and they were waiting um. in the car, so it was a little bit embarrassing because I was netball kit, um, not looking particularly. You still nice. had a boyfriend, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was the first time when he was sat waiting for James to come out in the car. I first met Steve when he was about 16. Uh, about 1971, he was standing wearing his school blazer at the end of his parents' back garden, which was next to the scout hut. Uh, at the time, I was a scout leader, and Steve was talking to some of his school friends who were scouts, probably Billy Graham and Rod McIntyre. Tyre. Of course, I then met him when he started playing for Okamara FC at about the same time. Now, actually, I can remember this very well because I was about three weeks old and Mum and Dad had brought me proudly back to the house uh, from the hospital um, and in the pram. And Jackie stepped up over the pram, uh, popped her head over, gave me a kiss and said, welcome to the family. And then Steve popped his head over and promptly nicked my rattle. <laughs> well, I knew then that was the sign of things to come. So for the next 14 years, I shared a room with Steve. Um, and obviously I was very much the junior partner, uh, being sort of almost five years younger than him. Um, <laughs> so if, there were, if we lived in, uh, if we slept in bunk beds, I was on the lower bunk. Um, if we listened to music, it was always his records, so I know all the words to all the Dave Bowie records. Uh, <laughs> Deep Purple, Mungo Jerry, you name it, I know it. Uh, if there was any food going, then I got the scraps. Um, hence um, Steve's uh, size now. Uh, but I first met Steve in around 2000, I think, uh, but got to know him a lot more from 2006 as I became MD of the, uh, the Corby business. And of course, got to know him better than that once Murphy Kappa made the acquisition of Oakland. When I say I really got to know him, uh, I really got to know him when we said goodbye to one of our ex-colleagues uh, at an Arsenal game. Not only did we go for a few beers straight afterwards, but we ended up doing shots. We got onto the shots after Steve introduced us to a betting game. We all had coins in our hand, and uh, as we shook our hands, laid out the coin, the one with the highest coin didn't have to take the shot, the rest did. Uh, started off quite lightly with Jägermeister, moved on to Sambuca, and then finally to Absinthe. Yeah, got quite crazy after that. So by the time we'd left the pub at uh, uh, the Emirates Stadium, we were all a little bit worse for wear, but particularly one of our colleagues was absolutely blottoed. Uh, that became a little bit more difficult by the time we got down to the tube. Um, in fact, he was hallucinating. His body language was incredible. He was seeing people and things that Steve and I couldn't see. The fun really started when our Kelly got off the train. The hallucinating had got quite severe. Apparently he was now seeing uh, uh, the devil and goblins. In fact, he thought the goblins were going to kidnap his family. So much so that he decided that he needed to set fire to the house where he thought they were coming from. Luckily, uh, another one of our colleagues was there with, uh, with him and uh, managed to refrain him from doing anything that was so stupid or crazy. Well, I met Steve in the early 70s. Um, I was going out with a friend of his, and I think it was Oakham Rugby Club. And there's one thing that I'll never forget about Steve, and that was his enormous moustache. Over to you, Tony. Again, I met Steve in the mid 70s, playing over at Oakham, and Steve was on the opposition. Um, Steve then saw the light and came over to uh, Melton to play for Brian Hesford's Flying 15. Before going back over to the dark side and joined, rejoined Oakham Rugby Club. He's currently Oakham's president. Oh, who? <laughs> Steve. Oh, Steve. I can't remember. I think um, that might have had something to do with it. Um, in fact, it definitely had something to do with it. And something to do with, with rugby, the rest of it, to be fair, um, is history and I can't remember. Well, I think that was when Keith was in hospital and it was probably a bad back. 
and oh, and I think he had a beard as well. And um, Steve came in, and that was I think the first time I met him. And that probably also is one of the favourite stories because Steve carried on to fill in Keith's medical record notes and included phrases like um, liable to extreme flatulence and things like that which were read by other medical staff later. I can remember when I first met Steve, he was in the club, the old clubhouse, uh, done the, we'd even done the extension and he was with Darren and he was trying to out, uh, outdo Darren uh, by saying I'm, I can drink more pints than what you can and unfortunately Steve was the second and he finished up, he was totally legless. Right? Again? Right? And this is round about probably, we didn't really know each other at that time but in 1987 ish. So, right the first time, I thought, who's this guy trying to keep up with his lad? He did well, but he was the second best. Over to you, Barbara. I can't remember meeting Steve for the first time. I think I've always known Steve, or it feels like I have. <laughs> He's that kind of guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well, I, f I first met Steve when he worked at uh, RPC Consonus. Um, in them days, he looked a bit like Magnum, uh, but he couldn't afford P.I. P.I., yeah, but he couldn't afford the Ferrari. Uh, now he can probably afford the Ferrari, but he doesn't look like Magnum. <laughs> Hi, Dad. You're actually sat with us right now while you're watching this, but um, Katie and I have sort of built this video together, um, and as we were doing so, we were thinking about how we can put our stamp on it and what we can do to contribute, and instead of us answering a lot of questions that we probably all talk about um, when we're together a lot. We thought we'd write a, we'd, we'd compose a little list of the the traits, the scenarios, some of the funny stories that we've all sort of experienced, and and what you, you'd hope we'd forgotten. You'd hope we'd forgotten, <laughs> and what what reminds us of you, um, and and what is uh, so great about you. Um, oh, it's a long list. Yes, <laughs> yes, it was meant to be a lot shorter than this, but it just kept going. It sort of snowballed. Um, so we're but, just going to go right into it. Yeah. So the first one we've got is one of my fondest oh. and earliest memories, yeah. and and it, this really is what like really takes me back is when we were driving down Brook Hill, and we we're in Dad's old blue mud. Blue, yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember Dad used to put us in our lap. Sorry, Mum, if you didn't know this. Um, he used to put us in our, in his lap and he used to do the pedals and give us the wheel and it used to feel like we were driving and I just remember being like, this is the coolest dad in the world, he lets us drive. It Go wasn't just there, I remember, I remember one time he took me round well and way doing it. <laughs> But you genuinely got this feeling that you yeah. were driving, you had the wheel and then you just see his knees going and like this. And he used to always <laughs> say that trick where you're coming down the hill and he'd be like, Oh, God. Oh, the brakes are working. The brakes are working. We will try to put us to death. Yeah, the one that uh, <laughs> sticks in my mind really is, uh, is quite recent. Uh, just before Judith and I uh, were married in 2008, uh, some friends from uh, Peaceborough Rugby Club uh, arranged for us to go and have a day at, New at uh, Newmarket Races. And uh, Steve was asked to come. In fact, he was the only, uh, the only one of, the, of my Oakham friends who uh, who came along. So it was great to have him there. And as you can imagine, uh, it started at eleven o'clock. We very rarely got anywhere near the race course. We barely saw any horses. We placed loads of money on bets, lost lots of money, and drank far too much. And then got a coach back to uh, to Peterborough with the idea of going to have a uh, have a meal at an Indian restaurant, which we booked until your dad decided that actually that wasn't such a good idea and maybe we ought to go to the Peterborough Beer Festival. Oh, so 15 of us turned up at the Beer, beer Festival. <laughs> we are, the, 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 the way it was organised, everybody had to choose a drink and Steve Stoke chose the filthiest possible cider you could ever think of. So 15 people disintegrated to about six within, uh, <laughs> within a matter of minutes and ultimately we ended up with four. Um, 
in a pub somewhere in Peterborough. Uh, two disappeared, which is my, my best man and another mate of mine from uh, from Maxi. Um, and his wife, interestingly, realised that neither of them actually could get across the main road, so she had to drive round and round about and come back up the other way to pick them up. They couldn't walk. And then Steve, <laughs> Steve and I uh, sort of sat and had uh, one of those meaningful chats you could only have when you're really pissed. And, uh, excuse my language. <laughs> and uh, that's what we did. And so I learnt... Uh, uh, learned quite a lot about Steve that day, and we learned a bit more about each other, and that was really the start of renewed and closer friendship. <laughs> Steve did spend a lot of time in the back garden at 79, playing sport, honing our skills, uh, football, cricket, uh, you name it, but mainly football and cricket, and we'd spend hours out there. Now, when I say hours, that was mainly because uh, football, I'd be winning about 14-0, cricket, I'd have built up a score of 199 for one declared. And poor old Steve was struggling and I did feel sorry for him. So obviously Steve wouldn't let me physically back into the house until he got back. So I had to let him sort of come back and, uh, uh, and, and draw with me. So Steve, you know, I think you realise that was the case. Um, and uh, obviously now I'll put it on record. I can answer that one. and I'm probably going to get into such serious trouble about it. But you know how Wendy's always trying to get Steve to diet? And, um, well, he buys secret cakes from Curtis Bakery. <laughs> I've met him in the queue and he says, don't tell Wendy. <laughs> so, Wendy, that's why your husband never loses any weight. <laughs> uh, I remember one of my main memories of us together, we had lots of good fun times actually, but one was in Amsterdam and you took me to the Banana Club. Um, I was working at the time, but you sort of, you were playing and took me up there. And you were greeted by two strippers, scantily clad, who threw their arms around you and said, Steve, Steve, we haven't seen you for ages. It's so pleased to see you back again. And I thought, oh, well, this bloke's a regular. Uh, that was before you met Wendy, obviously. There's many, many more embarrassing things that we could, I could say about you, but uh, what goes on tour stays on tour. Um, and obviously that was the days of the slut. Oh, the oh, slug. The slug. Whoa, that also the slug. turned into a goatee. The goatee that, that it had to be the, filled with mascara one Because year, it didn't so quite match the, the top. top. Well, what about when he had the slug and um, <laughs> was it me? He blew a big bubble gum and <laughs> it popped on his face and all the was stuck. People try to put us to death. Talking about my generation. <laughs> Just because. He said poo. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, when he was around 16, uh, about 1971, he was standing wearing his school blazer at the end of his parents' back garden, which was next to the scout hut. Uh, at the time, I was a scout leader, and Steve was talking to some of his school friends who were scouts, probably Billy Graham and Ron McIntyre. Tyre. Of course, I then met him when he started playing for Oakmore FC, at about the same time. That's an easy one actually. Uh, I last saw Steve and we played golf together, so the thing that makes me laugh was his golf swing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking bro, and hopefully uh, your um, golf will improve because we need it to when we take on Adam James for the uh, furry. It really made, made me laugh and Kate laugh and mum laugh was literally last weekend when and doing the usual tidying up after a cracking Sunday roast at mum and dad's and uh, mum wanted some of the last remnants of the red currant jelly put in the gravy and, you, <laughs> and so she asked dad to put the red currant jelly into the gravy and dad being his usual jovial self it would be a cracking idea to drop the whole jar in it <laughs> and, um, and at that point only he found that funny <laughs> And it's rare for his dad to do something that only he found funny, mm -hmm. and uh, we were all laughing at him rather than rather than with him. So. Well, I guess that's just every time we speak, because Steve is a really funny guy, very quick-witted, and very sharp with his humour, and we all love it. Always making me laugh every time we go out. Tony, there's something in particular you'd like to say. Steve is a secret assassin. He never makes me laugh. I don't think he's very funny at all. Next one I think is one of our, our personal faves. 
is where uh, <laughs> we're enjoying a calm glass of wine in nice, the lounge. Nice Sunday lunch <laughs> at, at the Barnstones. And, and, and uh, just happened to just tap a glass of red wine over. But it wasn't <laughs> anywhere red wine. It, it was, was Chateau Neuf de Pap. Pap. <laughs> Three words. First of all, it's been to me. It's been a great made thirty odd miles. Or by three words. No, it can't be three words. <laughs> it, because three words would never describe it. <laughs> it's been a good made to me. Uh, we've enjoyed great company. We've had good outings in Scotland, uh, playing golf. It just goes on and on. It's been a true friend, loving, loving to bits. Faithful, true, and bold. You mean? There you go. Three perfect words. <laughs> Fred Flintstone look-alike <laughs> but if I had a fourth it would be a thin Fred Flintstone look-alike <laughs> probably describe Steve in three letters X X L the first X is for extremely crap or no no generous to his friends and family the second X is for excellent sportsman. Rugby, cricket, patank, all played with great sportsmanship and competitiveness. The last L stands for loyalty. Steve is very loyal to his family, friends and ORFC. I'll forget that he had a spell of play for Melton Mowbray. Um, generous. Generous. Loyal. Um, and then really to be the most accurate, competitive. <laughs> I mean, we all know where we get it. Can I swear? Yep. No, he's a very nice man. But sociable, optimistic and uncomplaining. Double oh, seven. seven words are not enough. That's asking a lot, three good words. Uh, so I would actually just say an all round good egg. Time crisis. Getting dad when he got when he got basically a whole PlayStation just to play Time Crisis and got the guns and I remember you had to to reload you had to do that. To you had to drop yeah you had to drop the gun. Duck with it. Right. What did you say? Well, There's a time that I must have walked in on you and uh, you clearly didn't know I was coming or I was even in the house or anything like that and you were so determined to beat your top score you got the gun. Against the screen, <laughs> so you couldn't miss. You got like hundred percent accuracy. And I so thought you. Yeah. People try to put us to death. Talking about my generation. <laughs> one time, he did make me very cross. I was making Jackie's wedding dress, and I got the whole thing laid out on the table, ready to the spirit part, all ready to sort of do, and he. He comes with a cup in his hand and says, Oh, sorry, Mother. And of course, I just shut my eyes, and my vision is that, Oh my God, that's, you know. <laughs> his cup was empty. <laughs> now, now, what do you think I felt for that? So, <laughs> you tell him I haven't forgot yet. I'm still trying to think of something to catch it. I think there are two, but it's combined with the same one from my point is when we went to Besson where he chose great spirit for us when he when he when he had this bravado about uh, i'm scared of heights but i will show just what we're all about us uh, you know veterans and uh, and and did a, a dive in swan act uh, didn't dive as a swan but uh, finished up uh, quite mm. remarkably uh, I was one of his catches, <laughs> and I can remember saying, "Well, Craig, come on, Steve, you know, dive properly." But um, you didn't there, deliberately drop him. Yeah, no, there was a, there was a, a swimmer, a diver called Brian Phelps. Steve won't remember; he's too young. But uh, uh, and Steve dived like that, but I did break his fall. I I want to be remembered as the guy who saved him. <laughs> oh. So what was the end result? What was the end result? Yeah, he felt badly, but 
and Keith lost a foot in height. I used to be married to a six foot man. But, uh, but what bravado, fantastic. <laughs> Some would call it stupid. No, they wouldn't. Not at all. <laughs> and you? Your turn? You can't have the same as me because you were I wasn't there. there. No. But that was the trip where you never played rugby but you wore your right. boots out. But this is about Steve. Like I know, I know. Right? Yeah. You must have a crack in there's dozens. There's just so many times we've been out with Steve and he's such good fun and such a good host and everything. Yeah. yeah. It was a sunny day over at Clipsham and we got the um the tarpaulin plastic slip and slide. What's wrong with it? <laughs> The tarpaulin plastic slip and slide out, and there's me flying down it, there's Archie flying down it, and Kate gave it a bit of a go. And Dad's watching and he's gearing himself up. He's thinking, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, and he, he lines up, and then he, no, I'll let, I'll watch somebody else again. I'll just, just, so you, you could see he was calculating exactly the trajectory of his run and his jump, and how he's gonna hit the slide and go. And then, in the end, what happened was, could be only described as a kill a whale jumping from the sea and landing into a sandpit because he just went whoop and just stopped <laughs> flopped on his side no movement whatsoever and we were in that's a tricky one because there's just so many i still love the one of how he always used to take his sandwich with him on family picnics if he needed a comfort break well there are so many um how we became known as icarus is one that springs to mind but i'm sure somebody else will tell you that uh, and why he left university, that's another interesting story. I think my favourite is the time we drove my Renault 4 by committee. I was driving from uh, playing rugby at Bingham, Tom Robertson the copper was in the front passenger seat, Steve was in the rear immediately behind me, and the other two passengers in the rear were John Mowry and Graham Jenkins. Tom decided that he would operate the gear lever, a sort of walking stick handle affair that stuck out of the dash. So I would press the clutch and Tom would change gear. Uh, we were on a gated road and no edges or ditch to either side. This worked fine. Then Steve placed his arms over my shoulders and said, I'll do the steering. And thus we proceeded along the road for a mile or two. What teamwork! <laughs> we had a very happy childhood, I have to say, all of us, thanks to Mum and Dad. Um, and two things I can remember. Um, one was that us kids would uh, quite often do a, a family play. And uh, the one I remember most was the case of the crimson coconut. Uh, and we used to put it on for Mum and Dad. <laughs> And um, this was based on an old Goon Show uh, script, if I remember rightly. Um, now, we all had different parts to play, but Steve always liked to take the female parts. <laughs> now, and he used to dress up accordingly and put rouge on and put false boobies on and all that sort of thing. Now, there is a worrying trend, because Mum has photographs of him coming back from Rhodesia as uh, Andy Capp's wife, Flo, dressed up as uh, that, and also in various school plays, taking more uh, female lead roles. So, I don't know, Wendy, but if you've ever found your clothes going missing, you might want to know that uh, you better look in Steve's drawers, because he does have a sort of proclivity to get dressed up as a, as a woman. Um, I always thought he should have joined the Royal Marines because they like that sort of thing as well. I was going to tell the one because we were both involved in it. Yeah, you, was... you shoot. <laughs> <laughs> was um, when mum and dad again visited Bristol um, and I was with Nick and my other boyfriend Alec um, and, <laughs> and we went to Brasserie Blanc and it was the first time Alec had met mum and dad so he was a bit nervous. And uh, it just, uh, it went from a really nice sophisticated dinner to carnage quite quickly. And uh, first of all, we got the menus and uh, there was one of those long kind of A3 paper menus and Alec was yeah. reading it. And then all of a sudden we just had this and it started catching on fire. <laughs> so Alec started putting it out. And then the waitress came over and went to give something to onto the table and knocked over the glass of wine onto it in Dad's direction. And instead of sort of taking the hit, Dad's quick reflexes just pushed it onto Alec. <laughs> and it just went all over. Um, and then something happened with Mum's dessert, and it had this, like, wafer thing on it. And she went to break a bit off, and it, like, flicked into yeah. Alec's face. 
<laughs> so that was one of my favourite stories. It will be um, okay. Yeah, but that's why you don't go to Malik anymore, me. <laughs> well, I think that was when Keith was in hospital, and it was probably a bad back, and oh, and I think he had a beard as well. And um, Steve came in, and that was, I think, the first time I met him. And that probably also is one of the favourite stories because Steve carried on to fill in Keith's medical record notes and included phrases like um, liable to extreme flatulence and things like that which were read by other medical staff later. Squirrels? are not safe to enter the Beanland Garden. In particular, if they don't have a swimming costume or a pair of trunks. If a squirrel enters Steve's garden, or worse, goes into the house, they're never seen again. After a few too many wines, there's a, a tendency to get a bit peckish when you come in from a, from a session. And then one day, um, Somebody went into the fridge the next morning and discovered a block of Cathedral City <laughs> with, with a massive bite mark out of it. I've never seen anyone do that. People try to put us to death. It's charm. It's got more charms than a Pandora bracelet. <laughs> and his forklift truck driving skills, I suppose. What, the truck windy? Yeah, because that's all he could do when he first met, she well, first I, met him. I wouldn't have thought that would have attracted her. Uh, Steve. I have absolutely no idea. It. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the fact that, uh, you know, that no, uh, oh, those yeah. of us that know Steve, uh, despite the sort of outward bluster, is... Uh, He's, um, uh, he's a really kind man. He's a very generous man. He's a man that cares hugely about his family uh, and cares hugely about his friends. And uh, you know, from my point of view, I feel really privileged to be one of them. And we came up with the word charismatic first. We did come up with charismatic, and then I thought that was far too complimentary. We also yes. came up with good looking, and I decided yes, I, said, I wasn't going to use that either. That, either. <laughs> that must have been after a drink yourself. He's jealous, you see. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny going back, you know, to school times. Steve was one of those people. He always had people around him. He had something about him, and you two have got it as well, had something about him that just attracted people towards yeah. him. He had a great like a sense of humour, yeah. and of course, just to be completely and utterly irritating, he was also quite intelligent and a, a very good sportsman. We're in the car, we're not with this or that. <laughs> I just remember your little tactic, again I use it with Arch, but your tactic of if we'd fallen asleep but we were pretending to sleep in the car. Oh, uh, no, 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 Have you got that there? Yeah. You'd be like, you'd be like, oh, look, there's Frederick. And we're like, oh, no, wah, wah, wah. oh no, I'm sleeping. Oh, look, it's Stacey Williams. Michelle <laughs> 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 yeah, Rowley. Freddie Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Mamby. Um, <laughs> Cars we get around. Two would be a pair of crutches because you've always ailed by your feet, your knees, your legs, your bum, your back, your prostate, or whatever. Uh, and maybe a blow up doll, or if you want something special, a blow up sheep. I, I think he, would, he should take a telephone box, uh, a very, very long piece of wire, and a telephone. Well, I think it would have to be a, um, a pirate alarm warning system. <laughs> Absolutely terrified of pirates. Well, he was when we went on holiday yeah, to Thailand. Um, Apart from that, he's, he's, I think he'd want to take Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. And uh, maybe one of those cream filled Chelsea buns <laughs> from Curtis Bakery. And this is, this is quite easy. There were quite a lot. I think, given 
Steve's family values if he couldn't take you or with him, he'd like to take a picture of you. Yes. So I think that's the first thing. Yeah. We thought he'd like to take you some, but then we thought, well, if it's a desert island disc thing, we couldn't take all his family with him. But we thought if he took all his photographs, yeah. because yeah. you'd all be in his heart anyway. So yeah. yeah. We did think that. Yeah. I think the other thing, um, he needs to have a joint replacement kit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Self-administered surgery, I think, would be an absolute necessity. Um, and probably a rugby ball. Yeah. Um, because, he, uh, you know, as we all know, he needs some practice. So. <laughs> <laughs> and probably the other thing, uh, just in the back of my mind, he's had loads of them over the, over the years, is yet another good business idea. <laughs> because I think if he was on a... If he was on a desert island, he'd probably make something of it. <laughs> it would be a resort within two years. Well, I wasn't actually there no, when this there. happened. I and I remember there. coming I home there. on New Year's Day after a heavy New Year's Eve night and walking into a lounge and you guys had all been to the Olive Branch yeah. that night. Yeah. And this was, this I came in and mom. I was like, Happy New Year's, guys. And Dad turned around and looked like a hillbilly with half his tooth cut off. <laughs> And I was shocked at sight. I was like, how did you do it? Like, Your mother. Yeah. <laughs> Mum was basically picked the heaviest bauble in history of baubles <laughs> and cracked Dad around the face with it and chipped his teeth. And for the rest of the night, that olive branch, the the, the, the olive branch, you just kept asking everyone if you looked hard. You're like, do I look hard? Do you look hard? People try to put us to death. Talking about my generation. <laughs> his appalling taste in music, the number of times I had to listen to his Deep Purple LP as a kid, terrible. The other thing, terrible again, his 70s perm. Steve is a secret screw assassin. Uh, one thing that's, he's got a very, very small penis. He likes to wear ladies underwear beneath his suit. The full kit, stockings, suspenders, knickers, and a bra, which he needs these days. One thing Google doesn't know about Steve, which is the oddest thing ever, he doesn't like gravy. <laughs> Perfect. Who doesn't like gravy? Well, they don't know just how much money you really do have. But then I, then I thought, well, neither do Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. <laughs> but, uh, Google all sorts of uh, computer-based uh, communication. They're all very blunt tools, and they might tell you quite a lot factually about what Steve Beeland does, but they don't really tell you too much about what Steve Beeland is. And uh, all of the things that we've said all hang true. Uh, I feel enormously privileged to have been among Steve's friends. I hope that it'll carry on for many, many more years. And, uh, you know, outside your own family, you'd like to have somebody who will help you through the bad times and somebody will share in the good times and certainly I've had uh, some not so good times over the past uh, 10 years until I met this lovely lady here and uh, if I was to feel anybody's hand on my shoulder to, and I could look over my shoulder and find him there then that would suit me just fine. Sorry I'm getting a bit of a lump in my throat. And then, <laughs> basically I've just written down gay horse. <laughs> gay horse. Um, <laughs> And that would be from one of the best trips ever, was our Virginia holiday, Virginia, even yeah. though James, I don't think, enjoyed it that much. Oh, I had a cracking time. Oh, no, it was Australia yeah. when you were down there. <laughs> it's Chile, didn't want to see Is this about me or is this about that? Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the gay horse when, when Dad got on, we all got matched with our horses. I'm sure it's called Digby or I something like that. And you thought BJ, I'm sure it's um, Digby. And Dad Digby swear, the gay you horse. swear it's not a gay no. horse, but he was a gay horse. It, it was the fact to begin with, you'd started the trek and you're like, oh, mine's a sturdy horse, oh, this really is a real man man's man. horse, this is. It's <laughs> what did in the Civil yeah. War. Yeah, oh, proper Western, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the leader of the instructors just turned around and went, Oh, yeah, by the way, yours is a gay horse. He likes all the boys. It's not so Butch Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> well, more Cassidy, not Butch. People try to put us to death. Talking about my generation. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, no, he likes Ninja Turtles and he gets messed up. <laughs> of Fred and Splinter and all the turtles and all the baddies. I guess it's just the way he embraces life and everything it has to offer. 
He's always had a have a go attitude and it's brought him a lot of well-earned success and I hope he's very happy. Without doubt, Wendy, Pussy Galore and his kids. He didn't give me a chance to speak then, but Steve's got many good qualities, generosity and always good fun. Love you Steve and have a happy birthday! Happy birthday! See you soon! He buys me beers sometimes. <laughs> Well, I've always been impressed with his charity work. I think the number of housing houses that he's provided for the poor and homeless has been staggering. Uh, mm, genuine. Many. Yeah. Genuine. Yeah, is is just is a true, true friend. We know where we've got him. He knows how we are. He knows how to be a gentleman. <laughs> well, no, that is really, isn't it? <laughs> That would have been better than the previous question. <laughs> uh, it's 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 <laughs> what, Darren? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was more thinking of present company. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's genuine. Always very pleasing to be with. And I've been on a lot of events with him. Just true and true. Right true. Brilliant. Well done, Steve. Uh, I would just say, Steve, uh, it's the fact that you're my brother. Um, and uh, I've always been uh, extremely proud to call you my brother. So, happy birthday. It's definitely not that he's a Tigers supporter. <laughs> um, um, his best quality is probably his lovely daughter. Yeah. Um, second best quality, probably me. <laughs> Um, Dad's best quality, there are lots. Um, I would probably say that he's obviously very kind and very warm, but I generally don't think he'd be the man he is without Mum, so I think Mum's his best quality. It's virtually impossible to put a one one single quality on it, just, just generally that he's just an all-round top bloke, and he is... He epitomises like the perfect dad and perfect role model. All that rolled into one is him, basically. That's his best quality on my point. Happy birthday, Steve! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Nanny and Grandpa! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you both, lovely loads. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Cheers! But, uh, message to you, Steve. Uh, I love you loads, mate, and I hope there's plenty of years to come and have a fantastic birthday. And bear in mind, we have a dinner date at the George sometime in the new year. Mm -hmm. No, oh, which can feels actually. Is it? Yeah, just a big happy birthday to you. Have a fantastic day. Um, I'll be joining the club soon, so what a fantastic <laughs> club. Good health to you both. Love you both loads. Best wishes. So Steve, we know you are and always will be a bit of a devil. So here's one devil to another. A big, happy 60th birthday from Jigo Kadani, or two and me, Hell's Valley. Jesus Christ, I think I've gone to heaven. Cheers, Steve. Uh, many happy returns of the day for your 60th birthday. And that's from all of us. Uh, hopefully, Adam, Kelly and Julie will be sending separate messages. But uh, very many happy returns of the day from us all. generous and also very charming. We couldn't wish for a better brother-in-law. 
I'm having to look at my notes here. Uh, are you still wearing them clogs you had on when I first met you? I bet you've still got them. Um, we hope you have a fantastic birthday. Really enjoy it. So raise a glass to you both and have a wonderful, wonderful time. Cheers. Happy birthday, Steve. Yes, happy birthday, Stephen. 60 years young. Yes, and I've known you, what, 40 years now, I suppose? Yeah, and I've known you... Too long. 58 and whatever. Yeah, I think I've known you probably one of the longest. Yes, just about, I should think. Yeah. Now, uh, this is to dish the dirt on you. Oh, <laughs> you've got much dirt on him, have you? I've got loads of dirt on him. <laughs> but first offer to you, Steve, what's it worth? Not to dish the dirt. James and Katie are willing to pay quite highly. Yes, I'm in negotiations, but you could outbid them and all your secrets will remain secret. Yes. I will wait for your reply. Got anything to say, Bruce? No, good lad. I can't say anything about a good lad. I can't, no. Right, we're going to make this short and sweet because we really don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Take care. Yes. Love you lots, Steve. Yeah. Have a super birthday. Happy 60th. Yeah. And hope to know, know you another 40 years. Hi, Steve. I've not known you as long as the rest of them. But i come into your life very late on. And I've always found you a sound, a brilliant chap, first class. And to see you on your 60th birthday, happy birthday, mate. Cheers. Hi, Wendy Steve. Just here to wish you a happy birthday to the pair of you. Hope you have a lovely day. And especially to you, Steve, with it being your 60th. So have a wonderful time. Martin's at the football as normal. Girls are all happy here. And have a happy, wonderful day, the pair of you, with all our love. Cheers. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and all that, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he's gone through a hard life and it's 60. I thought you said 70. James said 70. Uh, 70, but 60. He's a good 60 year old, but, you know. 60 year old, 90 year old shy. I know what it's like, you know. I'm, I'm mm. a little bit older, but uh, yes. keep, it, keep it with me and you'll be all right, boy. <laughs> Wendy, <laughs> you're perfectly safe, I promise yeah. you, down there, if that's <laughs> all it's about. <laughs> His name from was Wendy's an angel, that's all I can say. She yeah. has to be. She'd put up with him all this time, but uh, give, give her a due, you know, she's good backer of him. God knows why, but <laughs> knows he must do something. <laughs> yeah. Happy just, birthday. Just a, a super bud. Yeah. Well done. Let's go. Happy birthday, baby, you old bugger. You're right, Steve. Happy birthday. Just a quick one. Hope everything's going well and you're having a great day, you deserve it. Send my love to everybody and uh, hopefully see you soon. To uh, compose a few answers to a few questions, mostly involved with uh, dishing the dirt on you. Um, and although I've known you for, God, how many years is it? Since sort of the, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, well, you were much younger than me at school, so, you know, you barely recognise the, uh, the younger people at school. Obviously, I've known you for that length of time, and I can honestly say, in all that time, there's never been an occasion where you've stepped out of line, where you've done anything at all that might be an embarrassment to you or your family later. So, you know, the basic answer is, I can't think of anything. I mean, obviously, there are one or two things that may have gone on on tour, but um, they're so minor, and probably, uh, if you're asked to do the same thing for me at a later stage, um, you know, if I keep quiet about your transgressions, hopefully you'll keep quiet about mine and we'll, we'll be quits. Anyway, mate, it's been uh, great knowing you for all these years. We hope you have a really happy birthday and, um, you know, the world will be a, a lot less fun place if you and, and your lovely wife, Wendy, weren't around. So happy birthday, mate, and uh, many more to come, I hope. Well, Steve, happy 60th birthday. Um... Hope you have a lovely day. I'm sure you will. Uh, over to Linda. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you, Steve, for all the wonderful times we've had together. We've had some fantastic ones. My 50th birthday in London. So I just hope you and your family have the most amazing day and happy 60th birthday. Uh, I understand it's Wendy's birthday as well. So happy 50th, Wendy. Uh, and I'd just like to wish you, Steve, a happy 60th. And both of you, many, 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 many more years. Happy, happy birthday from myself and my producer, director, cameraman, etc., etc., Julia. Happy, happy birthdays. Bye. Happy birthday and get your dear wife to give you a nice big hug, but a mummy hug now, okay? <laughs> Just a mummy nug, hug, nug. <laughs> nug? <laughs> but give him a big hug for me, please. And a happy birthday, Steve. Go happy, happy birthday, Grandpa! Say it again one more time, you ready? Go happy, happy birthday, birthday, Grandpa! grandpa. Happy, bu happy birthday, hope you're having a great day. Have a good evening as well, wish we were there. But as you can see, we're on holiday again, sorry. Uh, and it's tough. But we'll see you in February, and we'll have a big party out here as well to celebrate. Celebrating starting February, celebrating Grandpa. Celebrating starting February, yeah. We look forward to that. We say, do a big birthday party for Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then say one more time. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Grandpa! See you soon. Oh, I don't know how to turn this off. Hold on. Uh, surprise! I bet you didn't expect this. Um, so, as we all know, but. When it comes to birthday time, it's also anniversary time. So I want to just say a quick happy anniversary to my favourite couple in the whole world. Um, you mean so much to me. You mean so much to all of us. And hopefully this video has shown that. Um, you really do. You're an inspirational couple. We love you to pieces. And, you know, us kids wouldn't be the people we are today and have the people surrounding us today if it wasn't to, for your guidance and your love. Um, you've taught us so much, so thank you for everything you've ever done for us, and happy anniversary. Mother, father, just um, wishing you both a very, very happy anniversary. Um, hopefully you've just enjoyed a lovely day around at our place. Um, and I just really want to say it's quite remarkable, it's quite astounding that, that two amazing personalities can be put together f so consistently well for the past 30 odd years it's uh, it's truly remarkable and it's a, a huge inspiration to any any married couple or anybody going into marriage um, you know it's a, it's a real testament to both your characters and I just wish you the very best for many many years to come Mwah. happy birthday mum I know it's dad's big six so we're making all this fuss about him but I would like to say a big, a special message to you and a big happy birthday to you. Um, I actually heard a quote yesterday that said, behind every strong man there's a strong woman. And that is definitely true in this case. Um, you're one of the strongest women I know and probably will ever know. You've been through so much in your life and you've come out with it with grace and with a massive smile on your face and that's taught me so much. So I just wanted to say thank you for being the best mum, but also thank you for being my best friend. I love you lots. And I hope you have a great day and a great holiday. Mum, this is a, a special message just for you. Obviously, we're making a big sort of song and dance for Dad for his, for his 60th because it's a biggie. But um, really, I just wanted to send a special message just for you to say happy, happy birthday as well. Um, without you, Dad wouldn't be half the man he is. We all know that. Um, but throughout our whole lives, throughout every day, every year, every month, you mean so much to me and to my family and to everybody that you touch and you're involved with you are truly truly and i'm speaking genuinely from the heart you're truly a fantastic fantastic woman um and you know i just just hope you have the greatest birthday you could ever and your performance went well yesterday um and uh, and yeah happy happy birthday i love you lots love you love you 
So, the big 6-0, Stevie B. I can't believe you made it. <laughs> um, happy 60th birthday, Dad. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been a massive surprise and you weren't expecting a thing. Um, I also hope it's shown you how much you mean to so many people. Um, and for me, you, you mean the absolute world to me. And I'm glad that I can be there today um, to celebrate your 60th birthday. Um, you've always, like I said, you've always been there for me, even from um, the early days of helping me with my homework to screaming at me at a rainy netball sideline to now whenever I've got a concern about work. Uh, I know that you're always at the end of the end of the phone. So I want to thank you for everything. Um, you're the kindest, most generous person I think I know, you and mum. And I know, like I say, I know I can always rely on you. Um, you've always been my biggest supporter. Um, and I'm yours. So I love you lots and have a great day and uh, happy birthday. Father, Dad, Big Papa Bean, whatever you wish to be called, um, this is a, a very, very heartfelt special message to you on your 60th um, to say happy birthday. Um, Katie and I have obviously put the, the all these messages together and everything like that and Everything that everybody has said is absolutely wrong true. Um, being your son, I've probably been closer to you through all sorts of times, the good times, the bad times, um, the ill times, the well times, and um, it really is uh, re really impossible to put into words just how much you mean to me and to, to everybody around. Um, you're just an all-round top, top guy. You're caring, you're generous, you're kind, you're funny, um, but but most of all, you are you are the number one dad. There, there will ever, never, ever be anyone who is uh, stuck through the thick and the thin um, and, and always been there in a supportive and loving manner. Um, and especially now as I become more of an experienced father myself, I can just completely look up to you. Um, and if I could emulate half of what you've done as a dad, then I'd call that a massive success. Um, it's amazing to see one person be so successful in business, in love, in sport, with family, with friends, just in general, um, it, it's true. It's truly remarkable. Um, for that, I'm so proud to be able to call you my dad and, and one of my best friends. Um, so I hope you have a fantastic birthday, fantastic holiday. Um, there's no one else in the world that deserves it, but but you and mum. And um, I love you, mate. I really do. Happy birthday. We love Happy you. Happy birthday. Love have, a, have a have a toast. Both obviously love you with all our hearts, and you know, you, both as a couple, it's both your birthdays. But um, you know, obviously, it's a big six zero. But you're absolutely fantastic parents, and we love you. Yeah, you're the best parents we any, any um, son and daughter could ever wish for. Yeah, and um, we really do look up to both of you, and uh, and we love you lots. Yeah, take care right. and have love wonderful you. holes. Yeah, love enjoy. You lots. I was going to choose. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Generation. People try to put us to death. Just because we could get around. Generation. Generation. Generation.